Thank you. Good evening. I have to confess right up front, I may break a, the big rule for Lent, and I might say hallelujah by accident. I may commit a few mortal sins tonight with that one. So please forgive me in advance if I slip out in hallelujah, because that's like my middle name, you see? St. Augustine said, we're an Easter people, and hallelujah is our song. Amen. And I've always found a Lent to be a holy and a joyful time. I've never found it to be sad. I find Lent to be something holy and something joyful. I guess because the less of me, the more of God. That's what Lent does, you see? The less of us, the more of God. I was edified when Deborah had us pray the Hail Mary together. I'm, I love Our Lady so much. Don't you love Our Lady? Let, let's show her with a strong applause how much we love the Virgin Mary. Now, in Central America, we have the, the famous phrase, Viva, Viva Cristo Rey, Viva la Virgen. So let me teach you some Spanish right now. Is that okay? So I'm going to say, Viva Cristo Rey, which means long live Christ the King. And then you would answer with your right fist, you would answer, Viva. And then I would say, Viva la Virgen, long live Mary, the Virgin Queen. And you would say, Viva. Are you ready? Viva Cristo Rey. Viva. Pretty good, pretty good, really. Maybe a B plus. Let's try it again. Viva Cristo Rey. Viva. Viva la Virgen. Viva, Viva San Jose. Viva, Viva Cristo Rey. Viva. Alleluia. Don't tell the bishop I said that. Aren't we blessed? The greatest thing in the world is to be Catholic. Amen. And especially to be Catholic in the presence of the Holy Eucharist. My goodness. And one day soon, and we may well live to see it, the whole world will be Catholic and worshiping God in the Eucharist. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's been prophesied, right? Even your Bible says it. Doesn't your Bible say that? That one day every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so I'm going to ask Father Edward if he would please reserve these seats for the Hindus because they're coming. And these over here for the Buddhists because they're coming. And we're going to need a whole big bunch for the Muslims as well. Amen? Because they will be here with us worshiping Jesus in the Eucharist. There's only one name given to the human race by which we can be saved. And what is that name? Jesus. But it's not just like a law. It's a relationship. It's an encounter. Amen? And that's where we can make mistakes as individuals and as a church to want to like throw religion down somebody's throat. No. We want to pray that everyone, the entire world, has an encounter with Jesus Christ. Amen? We want to begin to love Jesus with Mary's love. And this is what we learn from the saints. It really elevated my prayer life and my faith a couple years ago. When I began praying every day, even in the middle of Mass, I quietly pray, Jesus, let me believe in you with Mary's faith. Let me hope in you with Mary's hope. Let me love you with Mary's love. Amen? It will change your life. If you exchange your faith, your hope, and your love for Our Ladies, no one has had greater faith than Mary. Blessed is she who trusted that the Lord's words to her will be fulfilled. And so the reason why Mary is so often appearing and she's painted in blue is because she is the blueprint for the Catholic Church. She's the blueprint of the human race. Amen. So, brothers, says, I remember something that happened at a charismatic conference I was attending in Florida many years ago, where I was born and raised. I was born and raised in Tampa. And I was attending a conference there. And I want to tell you something extraordinary that happened when I was there. The theme of the conference was 
Jesus Christ must be proclaimed as Lord. It was quite beautiful. And I was just a young fellow. I don't know, maybe 19 or 20. And I really liked, I loved the conference, and I liked the theme. But I was being more and more um, disturbed in my spirit, and I think anointed by the Holy Spirit as I listened to the speakers. What came across to me is what St. Louis de Montfort has taught us and what John Paul ratified, that Jesus, beloved, cannot reign as Lord of the human race until the Virgin Mary is accepted as mother and queen. And that is the key. And that's why Our Lady said that at Our Lady of All Nations in Amsterdam, precisely that, that when the doctrines, the dogmas of mediatrix of all grace and co-redemptrix and advocate, when those are proclaimed by the Holy Father infallibly, such a blessing will come upon the human race that the world will be converted. The Lord cannot reign as king until Mary reigns as queen. Did you realize that? It's one of the secrets of the Catholic faith. In fact, St. Louis de Montfort wrote a book. Not the famous one you know about, True Devotion, but you know he wrote a smaller book, and it's called The Secret of Mary. The Secret of Mary. It's a smaller one. And he describes these really facts of our faith. So Mary has an amazing role to play in the church and in your heart. She prepares us for the bridegroom. When I was an altar boy many years ago at St. Patrick's Church in Tampa, I lived right across the street from the rectory. Our family did. And it's really not fair because I couldn't get away with anything because the priest saw everything that we did right across the street from the rectory. And he called upon my brother and I to serve every mass, especially you know, the wedding masses and the funeral masses. There's nobody else available. So he would always call my mom and say, Maria, can, can Jim and, and Bill come over and serve a mass? So we served like every funeral and every wedding mass at that church like for years. We were like little experts, my little brother and I. And I remember we'd have the priest sacristy on this side and the altar servers over on that side. And when there was a wedding mass, almost always on a Saturday, the bride and her entourage they would dress over in the altar boy's sacristy. That was reserved for the bride to get ready. You know, they're so beautiful, aren't they? That white dress and their hair coiffed just right. I mean, anyone can look beautiful in that white dress. You know what I mean? Well, the mother would always be there. The mother of the bride should be there. And I was setting up the altar and invariably, because there were little vents in the sacristy wall, there were vents for some reason, I guess for some sort of airflow, it would also allow voices to travel. And so as people were coming in for the wedding, mom was back there with her daughter and, you know, getting her hair ready. And sometimes you would hear, ouch, mom, stop it, ouch. And mom be fixing the hair. And then sometimes you'd hear a, a couple words you don't want to hear in a church. Ouch, mama, blink, 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 ouch, mama. And I'm out there, I'm a little altar boy, like 12 years old and 13. And I would, I come from a big family, so it didn't scandalize me that much. You know what I mean? I've heard everything in my family. But I ran back there and I would say, shh. And I would point to the vents and they would be, you know, so embarrassed. And they would get real quiet. And mom would continue getting her daughter ready. And when the wedding mass would start and the wedding march would begin, you would see that beautiful bride. That's you. And the mother is Mary. And she's getting you ready for the wedding march. And sometimes it hurts. But she's getting you ready. Amen? And I realized that later as a priest, what God was teaching me, that Mary is the mother of the bride, and she prepares the bride and gets the bride ready for the bridegroom. So Mary has that role in your heart, and you want to invite her in tonight 
Because we're living in times that are nothing less than apocalyptic. The times we're living in now. And we need to be ready. And the fathers of old, more than a thousand years ago, said that in the final days, it is true devotion to Mary that would be the mark of orthodoxy. True devotion to Mary, entering the heart of our mother, would be the mark of an authentic Catholic. Amen? And that's because no one has ever loved Jesus more than Mary. No one has ever understood him better than Mary. No one has ever trusted him as much as Mary. And so I was at this conference at St. Leo's Abbey in Central Florida, Central Florida, and they were had this beautiful theme of Jesus Christ being proclaimed as Lord. And I knew in my heart that Jesus can never be proclaimed as Lord, whether you're charismatic or not charismatic, unless you proclaim the queen of charismatics, Mary, as our queen. Amen. It's in every Protestant Bible, isn't it? Who was there at Pentecost? Who was in the center of the apostles? Mary. No Mary, no Pentecost. I'm sorry. Amen. No Mary, no Pentecost. She has more charismatic gifts than anybody in world history. Has anybody healed more people than Mary? My goodness. And I wish I could hear Mary pray in tongues. I bet she has a beautiful prayer tongue, don't you? She is the mother of the charismatic movement. And so, as I'm listening to this, and I'm agonizing inside, because this is the doctrine of the saints, and it's really the doctrine of the church. We need Mary. She's not a nicety. She's a necessity. Amen? She's not a nicety. She's a necessity. And so, I was agonizing because I knew what the Lord was saying to me. And... I tried to tell the prophetic team they had set up, a team of men and women who had the gift of prophecy, and they would test prophecies for that conference. But I was a very young guy. I was like 19 or 20 with long hair. And I think my hair was in a ponytail that day. So I was anathema. It's like I was like bad or evil or something because I had long hair. So I couldn't fit in. I didn't fit the roster or whatever prophet is supposed to look like. I guess they never met John the Baptist. You know what I mean? <laughs> they haven't read maybe the whole Bible, just part of it, you see? And so they really didn't want to take me seriously. And I shared with them what I was receiving, that the theme of the conference was beautiful, but Jesus cannot be proclaimed as Lord until Mary is proclaimed as queen. The bride prepares the way for the bridegroom. Amen? Well, that may be something new for you, but it's really the teaching of John Paul and St. Louis de Montfort, St. Alphonsus de Gori, Mother Teresa. It's really the teaching of the church. And so they wouldn't listen to me, and I wrote it down. I said, well, you can write it down. And when I gave it to them, I could see they didn't want it. Because I was young with long hair, so I must be bad, you see? So I went back to my seat. More talks proceeded. As I'm sitting there watching the stage, the light in the ceiling, like just one of those back there, the high light up in the ceiling, pouring down on the stage, began to flicker off and on, and it turned blue. Lights just like these. So imagine one of those lights suddenly sheds blue light here on the ambo, blue, not white, blue, and began to go off and on. For 45 minutes, a blue light. I don't know if anybody else was seeing it. So when that talk was over, and they took a break, I went up to examine the light, and there's no blue filter up there. It's just like all the other lights. And so I realized, whoa, the Holy Spirit is confirming something. Amen? That Mary's blue light, it was a confirmation that she has to be proclaimed as well. We were going to, through a time in the church when we were ashamed of Our Lady. We need to love Our, Our Lady with Jesus' own love. Amen? 
So I'm going to tell you what happened in just a minute. But what I'd like to do is pray, therefore, a decade of the rosary with you. And I'll tell you one reason why. Because praying is more important than preaching. Prayer is more important than teaching. And sacrifice is more important than prayer. Amen? So becoming real Catholics in real Christians, you see? So we want to pray now for the wisdom of God to flood you and I. Can we do that? I want to pray a decade with you. And if you have your rosary, you might want to pull it out right now. Padre Pio said, this is the weapon. Padre Pio. Padre Pio. This is the robe he used to wear. Been entrusted to me. This is the robe of Padre Pio. Who said that this is the weapon? The rosary said is the weapon. He was the most powerful, charismatic saint in history. Amen? Would you like to touch Padre Pio's robe? Then I think maybe when we're done, I'll place the robe on a special table. If you'd like to come up and touch the robe, we'll ask Padre Pio to give you what you need the most to be ready for the times that are coming. Amen? And if you don't mind, I want to pray that everyone here becomes a saint. Is that okay? Let's pray that everyone in this church becomes a saint. You were chosen to be here tonight. Amen? So get ready. We're going to pray a decade now, the fifth joyful mystery, the finding of the boy Jesus in the temple, because the fruit of this mystery is wisdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let me just do the opening prayers anyway. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. For his holiness, the Pope, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we ask you to grant to everyone here an increase of faith and hope and charity and our family members as well. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. My Jesus, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. Ave, ave, ave Maria. Maria. 
Well, beloved, the first mystery of joy is the Annunciation, the second, the Visitation, the third, the Nativity, the fourth mystery, the Presentation, where we pray for purity. And what is the fifth mystery of joy? The finding of the boy Jesus in the temple. So let's offer this in a special way for all the teenagers throughout Seattle. Can we do that? All the teenagers here in the church and the children, all the kids throughout all the state of Washington, they are under attack like never before. Amen? Amen. And we have to pray for them, and the most powerful weapon is the rosary. We're going to ask Blessed Carlo Acutis to pray with us, the new 16-year-old saint whose body is incorrupt. The first saint in world history buried in blue jeans. He's in blue jeans, his body is incorrupt in Italy. And he's standing right next to me. I don't know if you can see him. He's standing right next to me. And I'm getting the Holy Spirit all over me right now. We ask Blessed Carlo to pray with us this mystery of the boy Jesus for all the teenagers and children of Washington and those who are here and in your family. Amen? Amen. The future is in their hands. It's time for them to become saints. The fifth mystery of joy the finding of the boy Jesus in the temple. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Now we visualize the boy Jesus coming to the temple and teaching the elders. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, mother of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, all beautiful, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh, my Jesus, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. 
O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. For he alone is worthy. For he alone is worthy. was good, wasn't it? That's medicine for your soul. The rosary is the best preparation for the Eucharist, by the way. It's the way to receive the Lord well. And maybe we'll pray another decade in a few minutes, okay? Only if you're good. <laughs> or if you want to become good. And just a little aside so you know this, you know, Carlo Acutis died when he was 16, 2006, in Italy. His tomb is now in Assisi, where St. Francis is, because that was his favorite saint, St. Francis. And so the church gave permission to move his holy body to Assisi. And the Franciscan friars there in Assisi just released a report last year that for the first time in history, more pilgrims are going to Assisi and visiting Blessed Carlo than visiting St. Francis for the first time in ever. His body, has a, there's a little glass strip on the tomb. You can see his incorrupt body. And this young man was a computer wizard, by the way. Back in the early 2000s, he was in on the very beginning of the computers. He actually said to his parents one day, he said, Mom and Dad, I, I tried those new video games. He says, you know what? And they said, what, son? They're addictive, he said. They're addictive. He says, I, I like them and they're fun, but I can see they become addictive. So I'm going to limit myself to one hour a week. Imagine the teenage boy telling his parents that. If only every Catholic parent would tell their teenagers that. Amen? And this young man, beloved, was a saint of the Eucharist. It, he's the one who converted his mom and dad to the Catholic faith and all of his family as well. Well, you know... He's now blessed, blessed Carlo. There have been quite a few miracles through the invocation of his name and prayer. St. Francis has been appearing to his mother, Mrs. Zacutis, at night. And you might still be able to find those videos on the YouTube. His mother is alive and well, you know. And she's been testifying. She's very close with her bishop there. She was with the bishop when they examined the body officially. By the way, that's on the YouTube, too. It is quite amazing and touching to see the bishop with the mother of the saint there and the incorrupt body. It's incredible. In Spanish, increíble, to see that. Amazing and beautiful. Francis has been appearing to Mrs. Acutis in her dreams at night. And not just a fanciful dream, a three-dimensional prophetic dream. You see, like St. Don Bosco used to have our prophetic dream. And St. Francis told Mrs. Acutis a year and a half ago, your son Carlo occupies a very high place in heaven. Your son Carlo occupies a very high place in heaven. You know what that means to me? St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Augustine, St. Teresa of Avila, Carlo Acutis, John Paul the Great. He's up there with the greatest of them all. 
And it shows you that you don't need to be old with silver hair to be a saint. You could even be bald-headed and be a saint. But teenagers could become saints as well. Amen? And he told Mrs. Acutis, he said, when your son Carlo is canonized, not if, but when. And he said that to Mrs. Acutis a year and a half ago when Carlo was only venerable. He wasn't even blessed yet. He was just venerable, Carlo. When your son is canonized, then he said, God Almighty will fulfill all prophecy and send forth the Holy Spirit over the face of the earth and touch every teenager in the world with sanctifying grace. Amen.